looking at the best kits in the history time, you know, with the great history time of the 80s. Yeah. It was those Adidas kits were, were kind of symbolic. The Trefoil logo, exactly. the candy sponsorship, all that. That game yeah. started on the Trefoil oh, logo. Yeah. 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 Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining us. Today, also with us, we've got Rob Layton, who is a Liverpool kit uh, collector extraordinaire. If Carlsberg made kit collections, they would probably make one a bit like Rob's. You will hopefully have seen our interview with Jamie Carragher. If you haven't, where have you been? What have you been doing? Click the link and watch that. Um, but as part of that, we talked to Jamie about the kits that he'd worn during his Liverpool career. And thankfully, Rob was able to uh, bring us a whole host of shirts that we could talk to Jamie about. Jamie had given a lot of his shirts away over the years and auctioned them off to raise money for his foundation. So you can find out more about that and what Jamie's foundation does in our video. Just click the link. But now we are going to talk to Rob about his shirt collection. Rob, welcome to the channel. Yeah, thank welcome, you very much. And uh, yeah, a big thank you for uh, helping us uh, with our Jamie interview and making well, sure help we a legend like right. Jamie out, it's all good for me, you know. Yeah, so yeah, no problem no. at all with that. Yeah. So I mean, right, so there's obviously a ton of kits that are on the table here and mm. um, what would be, you know, we can't go through all of them, but what would be the three that you would pull out as they've got special memories for us or the design that you liked about them or the colour or whatever it might be? Because there's certainly a few on here that I'll get stuck into from a design perspective. Um, well, there's a few that are kind of really interesting. I think the, ch the changes between the two, two and three manufacturers over, over the period of Jamie was playing, for example, um, you got really differing styles of kit and you got really differing kind of levels of quality as well. Right. But um, I, mean, I always loved Adidas kits. They always, for some reason, they have a bit of magic and Liverpool fans in general will tell you that the best kits in the history time, you know, with the great history time of the 80s, yeah. it was those Adidas kits were, were kind of symbolic. The Trefoil logo, exactly. the candy sponsorship, all that. That game yeah. started on the Trefoil oh, logo. Yeah. Yeah. The size we love a Trefoil. Yeah. <laughs> Adidas, bring it back. So something like this one. Yeah. Um, okay. Unusual colour. It's yeah, but it's it's a nice colour. It's a it's a bold colour. It's not a. Was that a well colour. received when that first came out as a Liverpool fan? Then? Well, it's interesting because uh, the, the fans that I knew never really considered it blue. They considered it green. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? Because it's somewhere in between, I suppose, nearly. Yeah. Um, good memories for this kit because it's a. Uh, a kit when we had a really good team. Didn't necessarily win anything, but we had such good performances. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a Torres, Gerrard era kit. Right, and okay. that meant there's some, there's some great goals scored in that kit. Yeah, it's an, I yeah, mean, from a design true. perspective, it has got a lot of quality to it. And if I remember correctly, at this time, there wasn't a difference between a replica kit and a player's kit. No. So, I mean, there is some really interesting details because obviously, you know, they've got the checkered um, red and white on the inside there, so that's really quite interesting. You know, you've got some interesting badge applications as far as your crest is concerned, because what I've found across a lot of Liverpool kits is there's so much inconsistency from brand to brand, and that's mm. like their own brand's logo has been really inconsistent. If you look at where that's been positioned, you know, I personally would have dropped that Liverpool badge right in the centre. Yeah. Mm. But then the Liverpool badges themselves, over the years, you have had all sorts of different Because that's the official crest, yeah. isn't it? That's yeah. the whole crest yeah. in its entirety. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's the flames. Yeah. yeah, which, I mean, even as a Newcastle fan, you know, it pains me to say, but it is a beautiful logo. Like, mm. But I have to say, as much as I like that logo, I think possibly the one you're going to talk about next, is that this maybe? Yeah, that's the first Warrior kit. Um, uh, quite a Marmite kit when it came out. Um, Not as much as the away kit. Uh, no, God, goodness me, no. Absolute Joe. horror show, was, that was. Slaughtered for that one. But this one was... Um, it's probably got a bit more fondness now than it had then. I think people look back and say, yeah, it was actually all right. Um, Colour-wise, it's a bit fussy. The badge is really nice. They got the badge yeah. so right because it's mm. just... Uh, it's the simple Liverbird badge, LFC and they use the, the flames. Yeah, 
which has sadly the, gone up yeah, since then. Up by yeah, one, unfortunately. Yeah. But I think that that's what I was getting to earlier when we were talking about this particular crest and where it's got to now. Because even Warrior itself, as a brand coming out, was quite new to the to the scene, if you like. Certainly to football, yeah. Yeah, yeah because it's an American company, right? The cross brand. The cross, exactly. Yeah. So what I do think they've done, and they've done really well, and it's nice to see that Nike's carried that over, is they've kept that crest. And I think you're absolutely right. That is, it's so, it's so effective. It's so simplistic. And when you see it against something like that, it just works so much nicer. Yeah. It's so right. kudos to them. I mean, I think that's a, you know, a great look. I'm not a big fan of the kit again, but I think as far as consistency, placement, brand, and all mm. that sort of stuff, I think they were absolutely. Yeah, it was interesting. On point. Like they understood the club and some of the things that marked the club out. Fairly made an effort, yeah. Yeah, yeah which definitely. was then in stark contrast to some of the other stuff they did. Mm. It almost felt like they were just trying too hard with those away kits yeah. in particular, where yeah. it's like, oh, we're the new kids on the scene, we've got to make an impact. And well, I think you're leaning on just one of them, right? Uh, no, I'm actually no. leaning on an Ecru Reebok number. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, don't be. Don't Tell be us about this. We we couldn't oh. let you get away without talking about this well, doozer. Yeah, it's a, it's a belter. Um, some great performances again to remember in that. I just remember players like Patrick Berger wearing that kind of kit and lashing the ball in from 30 yards. And it, it, so it, it's again with with the really nice kits. The differentiator, as much as anything for me, is. For Liverpool kits, it's where what they bring back in terms of memories and the, and yeah. the faces I picture wearing them. You yeah. Because so there's some kits I can look at and think, oh, that was worn by say Andy Carroll. Mm, okay. Not the Watch best. Watch it. Don't don't say bad things about Andy Carroll in hey, front no, of Craig. It's, it's all have you? good. But, um, <laughs> best in, best in, best sale of the century. That yeah, like. there you go. Yeah, <laughs> you know, all right. Okay. Um, yeah, that kit. Um, um, late nineties, well, middle to late nineties kit. We were good. We played some nice football, and it was also a kit that you could wear casually. I thought because yeah, it's, it's yeah. a colour that doesn't necessarily, you know, argue with anything else you're going to wear. Yeah, yeah. not we're, a massive. That's, fan what they, that's what they sold it on as well. I think as, as a leisure wear. Yeah, thing. well, I yeah. think yeah. the yeah. advertising wear it for cricket as well, as well on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that the crest on that is another example of where oh. I think it just went. It looks like a beer mat, <laughs> frankly yeah. speaking. It does but look. it's funny because a surfboard. perhaps that was a when tie I, in with Carlsberg. Yeah, quite possibly. But I remember. So here's a true fact, right? So when I used to work for Puma, so the first ever time I started in the industry, the first brand that I worked for was Puma. And the, w there's a position within the industry called a PLM, which is a product line manager. And they are basically the people that service you with the brief for your designs. Mm -hmm. The guy who was servicing us with that brief that particular time was a guy called Mark Colin Tomy, And he is actually the designer who designed this kit. And I had so much fun with him, taking the, the proverbial out of him for what I thought at that time wasn't a great kit but it has it's got kind of legendary status and i believe there's been movies and all sorts made about this particular kit so yeah, yeah it's an interesting one but yeah sadly yeah. still isn't like, one of my favorites like a fine wine yeah absolutely unlike, unlike the logo and the badge executions which have aged like a fine milk well i think if you if you take just on that point then rob if you were just to pull out some of rob uh rob's reebok shirts and you look at them over the years and just how inconsistent not only their own branding has been yeah. but the the logos of liverpool and i mean there's other ones where reebok is written as a word mark I've i mean that on your side yeah the, i well. mean there's just all sorts that's one there as well you know yeah. yeah so there's that one here if i can just pull that one out you know, the sizes of the crest. I mean, it literally is all over the, the place. The Blockbusters kit. And well, it, it was typical of Reebok of the era. Was There was Villa, West Ham, Liverpool, Bolton. Yeah. Um, which is mad to think that they had four teams in the in the Premier League at one point. But they were a big but, brand back yeah, in the day. Yeah, and all, all, the, all the crests were done in this way of a crest within a crest. And yeah. I, mm. I could kind of get it with Liverpool because it's such an intricate, detailed crest. You know, the... They could have done a better job of it, but it, in isolation, I could understand why they did something else. Yeah, but with to it. be fair, but then and, Bolton and I, I was think like you, I dead think, easy. Yeah, and I think you're being kind because I mean, as a Newcastle supporter, you know, we've seldom had that, and we've got a really complicated mm. badge in our in our Arsenal. So, 
you know, with regards to that, I, I see what you It almost feels like to me it was kind of the graphic team actually quite liked it at that time. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's all personal Different preference era. and stuff and mm -hmm. of an era. But, yeah, I, I, what I would say is I'm glad to see Liverpool have got a little bit more consistency in their kits. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but honestly, I kind of thank you enough for popping in, Rob. It's been absolutely sensational talking through some of these Liverpool kits with you. So, yeah. Totally. Cheers, Rob. Thanks for your support in the uh, pulling it together for the Jamie Carragher video as well. Thank you at home for joining us as well today and watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment. Have you got any preference of uh, any of these shirts or indeed any others that Liverpool have worn over the years? Uh, we'd love to hear of your great memories and sad memories of some of those shirts as well. So once again, thank you for joining us here on the channel and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. And if you haven't seen the Jamie Carragher video, click the link. But a brain fart. I think you've said it all, have you not? I think so, yeah. All right. I, was, I got subscribed back in my. That's all good. I so, think you've said it all. Right. Brain farts are fine. Well, let me let me just close it out. Appreciate that. That's definitely going in the outtakes. <laughs> <laughs>